third phase. Third phase moon play cousins. I got an email today from a person who claims to be Ed. I haven't spoken with Ed for years, and this person seems like he's the real deal. It's a new contact that the information coming in his email doesn't seem like it's Ed, but who knows? It my opinion, it seems like it is him, and he says he's got more footage coming in. And I'm saying well, let's see it right now. And he's stating, we'll just have to wait for another week. But in the meanwhile, get ready because he's back, apparently. Ed's back. I wanted to share with you one of our last interviews with Ed while he shares compelling photographic evidence of his encounters. Is Ed the real deal? I want to get your comments below. Here's the interview we had with Ed Hello, are you there? Can you hear me, Blake? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Stand by. Sorry, uh, you're coming in loud and clear. We're live on third page. Hey, tell us. Yeah. Go hey, ahead. Hey, Blake. Blake, it's good to hear your voice again. This is Ed. You remember Ed? me? Ed? <laughs> wow. Ed, it's been, it's been, how could we forget? It's been, what, about a month, and I've been uh, one, waiting. Everybody's been waiting to hear from you again. How have you been? What you been up to? Ed. Uh, uh, Blake, it's been a long, hot summer, as you know, and I know, I, I, I just want to first say that um, um, your friend, uh, what's uh, Andy Elias, Doctor Andy Elias. I'm glad to hear that he's made a turn for the better. I heard at the beginning of the show what you said, and I'm very happy for that. It's been a long, hot summer, but I did just send you and your brother, uh, your brother, some new footage that I shot. Your brother Brent, I think, got my footage, and okay, I hope you guys uh, we're here. Bye. I know. Check that email. Right now, Brent's here. We're taking calls from around the world. We're live right now. We have Ed, famous uh, abductee, and incredible. I, I'd say the best mm-hmm. photos and uh, I'm not videos. Famous. I'm, not, I'm not famous. I, I well, don't you know, famous. the third phase of the moon world, you are quite famous. People have been uh, begging me to get Ed back on and get more videos, more photos. I, I'm not saying you're well, famous. Blake, I know. Blake, Blake, uh, Blake but I told you from the very beginning that I'm not alone. I just had a video camera from a very young age, and I've had the opportunity. But what I'm sending you is not unique. I've said that from the very beginning, and uh, glad to hear again your friends. Absolutely, Dr. J is on the road in recovery, and uh, things are looking good. And we hope in the next couple of weeks we could have him back and maybe even get some statements from him. And uh, the thoughts and prayers for Dr. J were out there. Wow. Ed, I'm looking at your anyway, photograph. Blake, anyway, Blake, I hope you can use the footage I sent to you. It's something Ed, that I'm is actually shot pretty I want to ask you some questions about what this is, uh, again, Ed, something incredible. What is it? It's, it's triangular in shape. It's a, it's a TR3B, in my opinion. I know you don't know what it is, or do you? Uh, did it make a noise? Here we go. Let's start with the first question. Ed, I, did Blake, this thing make I, noise? I Was it a drone? Blake, I can tell you that I, I, I know what it is because I haven't visited before. This was a shot that I took, an uh, experience I've had in the same place. So I know you have people calling in and sending you videos, and they seem to be taken at the same time and not out of the same time of year in the same place. And I think that's key to all the things that I and experiences that I've had and that I've been able to show you. I've had this footage, and it, 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 there's a pattern here. There's a pattern. And whether it's getting to be something that you're finding more people are showing, uh, uh, it seems that it's just going to continue. You know, it reminds me of uh, people described to me of this triangular shaped formation over contact in the desert. Dr. J. And Andy Elias was there last year where there was a mass sighting while Dr. Greer was doing an event. We had a kahuna all the way in Hawaii wanted to let everybody know that there's going to be a triangular shaped formation. How big was this thing? They, over there in contact in the desert, they said it was possibly like three football fields wide. How big would you say this craft was? Uh, I'd say it was less than that, but I'd say it was definitely more than 150 yards wide. And um, my experiences with the craft are that, that, that that's, the, you know, that's, that's the scale you're dealing with. But it's hard to pick out scale from the photographs. I know the videos I send you, uh, it's hard. It's a different experience when you're seeing it live. But... You know, I haven't traveled to that part of the country. I like to consider myself pretty well 
road weary. I've been a lot of places in the country, but I haven't been to that spot in the desert. So what's happening there might not be what's happening where I'm experiencing it. Well, people uh, right here in the flash chat, said, flash chat, Bradford Blair, he says he's witnessed a triangular shape in his lifetime, and Brandon and I have witnessed something massive on uh, 2010, December 30th, and uh, they, they, it's the same thing all over the world. It's the same identical uh, kind of craft. I believe it's reverse engineered tech, uh, alien technology. What do you think? Is it strictly alien, or is it uh, man-made involvement? Oh, I, I don't want to... Blake, I don't want to dodge your question, but first you got to understand that the vantage point, taking the video is not the vantage point when you always have the sighting. So when you speak about a triangular shape, I don't think it's like a stamp. I think it's um, something that's different each time and it has to do with a different energy that's involved in these craft. It's not man-made. It's not military. There's a difference. I know you have... I, I don't keep up with you guys as much as I should. Whenever I do, I really enjoy what you're doing and all the things you post, but there's obviously some things that are not, um, you know, that, that are military, that are, I don't know the, the right words, domestic technology. Oh, but some things are and some things are not. This that I'm sending you, all the stuff I send you. Let me ask you, have you ever uh, worked for the military? No, I have not. I've avoided the military my whole life. Interesting. Can I ask? Yeah, how old are you? I don't want to say how old I am, not that I'm ashamed, but I just don't want to give that kind of information out. All right, man. I, I understand. I, I just, you know, there's been a lot of people asking about Ed, and uh, you know, I'm just glad to have you back on the show. I want to ask you about Voss. I know you've uh, had close encounters with a, a man that's or a being aboard this ship that you apparently you filmed, and there it looks like. There's an alien walking within the ship, and you say his name is Voss, and he kind of took you in in the ship, and he's kind of like your tour guide. Can you give me a little bit more, you know, detail about how Voss communicated, what he looked like? Hey Blake, I'll tell you all that I can. My memory is not that vivid on it. I think I mentioned to you before, I don't know if it was on the air or not, that it's kind of like having to describe a friend. Okay, tell me about your friend. Because I had no threatening feelings whatsoever. It was all very uh, tranquil and unthreatening, and although it was amazing, and it was very easy to do it, it was not something that I was ever felt threatened by. So to say, what was it like? Uh, what was it like when you, you know, I, I, it, it's not the sensory experience that you have here. It's a different experience. But if you think of things that happen in your life and you want to say, oh, do you remember when that happened? I can tell you what happened, but it's hard for me. So just like I guess it's hard for me to tell you how old I am, I can't just tell you exactly well, how, how long it was. Were you, Ed, Ed, could you tell me how long were you aboard the ship? Where did they take you? I was gone one time for as long as three days. Three days I got back. I had three days unaccounted for. I've been gone so long it's only been 15 minutes. The way that I'm having trouble in describing to you what it was like there and then is has to do a lot with that, the way the time is passing when the experience happens. So when I say to you, oh, remember your time with a friend, it's kind of like that. When you remember your time with your friend, ask your friend how long you were with him when that happened. Well, what did you, were you uh, married at the time? A missing report sent out for your location? No, 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 no. No, I, I don't need that kind of lifestyle. I didn't have a missed report sent out for me when I was gone. Um, I, I've never been that, that kind of person that had to answer to that kind of um, kind of demand. So, no, the answer to your question is no. But it's also it's the kind of question that uh, I don't want to sound like I'm dodging it, but, you know, I, I, you guys got the video. You can see for yourself what, what I've shot, what I've sent you, what my experiences are. But when you start asking me all these questions about my personal experiences, about what happened, I can tell you plain simply. It was a very um, – Ed, when we always look at your footage, it's basically the best stuff we at Third Phase of Moon has ever seen, and uh, some of the opinions out there believe uh, the same way we do. And uh, it's basically Billy Meyer eat your heart out on these kind of incredible uh, photographs and videos that you've captured. Yeah. These recent photographs, they're HD. We're, zoom, we're going to zoom it in, and uh, it appears that it doesn't look like there's any Photoshop. Let me ask you, people want to know, do you uh, work for Hollywood? Do you work with special effects? No, 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 no. I don't work for Hollywood. I work for special effects. And um, 
you know, I, I don't know who this Billy Meyer guy is. As I, I think I told you, I can't remember if it was on the air or off the air or maybe in a conversation with your friend. I, I've spoken to him, and he's a little gentleman. who says that I, I first got my first camera back in 1969. I was already shooting film back then. So I've had a hobby, this enthusiasm with cameras. And I also have the occasion to experience UFO sightings and more so through, I think, as I think I told your brother, through my relationship with my uncle, who was a, uh, was, was a pilot in the military. And you asked me before, now I'm giving you more information than I wanted to. It's probably responsible for my uh, disassociation with the United States military or all the militaries. Absolutely, this HD footage, Ed, you keep it up. And I was wondering, do you have any video of this uh, triangular-shaped object, or are you just uh, taking stills at this, uh, on this object? No, I was just taking stills on that object. Although my camera has the capacity to take video, I, I, you know, I, I'm, what can I tell you, Blake? I'm not shooting for anyone but myself. So what I had handy and what I did. Good job, Ed. You know, we lo- we're going to be uh, definitely sharing these incredible photos uh, on this radio show that we're going to repost on YouTube. So everybody uh, definitely, you know, we have our radio shows. But then the second half, the second act of the show, I'd have to say, is when we show the videos and the photographs that people submit while we're live on air, then you're going to be able to see it right here on Thursday. Well, Blake, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to share what I have with you and your brother, and as I uh, said, I think he's a real gentleman. I think you're doing a good job. And if people want to look at it and compare it to their experiences, that's fine. Because I think there's a shared experience out there, and I think this is a common thing. So, um, you know, I have a life, and this is part of my life. And I do other things as well. So I'm going to send it to you. Wow, well, I, I, I know you're a busy guy that you got to do what you got to do. And, you're, uh, you know, you're always keeping your eyes on the skies. You don't – you want to keep yourself uh, – you know, unexposed to the harsh elements out there because the world is kind of harsh in some of the comments that do come in, and I think there's a lot of hate uh-huh. out there that uh, sometimes. Like I'm, subject- I'm happy. I'm, I, I'm happy and indifferent to that. I don't, I don't care one way. It's just something I had, and I had the opportunity to send it to you guys, so I'm happy to share it. You know, we're getting a call, uh, a statement here from Flip It for you. They want to ask you: Do you ever post any other stuff like on, on the web, like on your personal Facebook, or do you have a YouTube channel no, that you? No, no, I don't have a Facebook account, and I don't have a, you know, it took enough for me to finally get a phone with a camera, but I don't do that. So, no, the answer, I guess, is no. All right, Ed, that, we're just uh, yep, uh, getting the questions out as they come in right here, live third phase of moon. And if you're on the flash chat, and we while we got Ed on, the, on, on, on air, let's, uh, anybody wants to ask him a question, I would suggest you do it right now because Ed doesn't call in every single uh, day of the week and with this kind of evidence as well. So we appreciate that and Ed for uh, joining us. Ed, can you stand by? We're going to take another caller. Sure, I'll stand by, Blake. Let's go to area code 619. You're live, third phase of minute. Welcome. Tell us your name, where are you calling from? Hey, Blake, it's uh, Kelly from San Diego again. Um, I just I wanted to say uh, thanks for those awesome uh, videos that also he uh, he shows a lot and um, his experiences that he's, uh, you know, he he lets us know about his experiences that he shared. I've got a couple of questions for him if, uh, if he's willing to answer. Ed, you there? Hello, Ed, you still on with us? Uh-oh. Seems like Ed's uh, getting lost in transmission here, unfortunately. Uh yeah, that's weird. We've been having some technical issues just on this radio show alone. Ed just got back. He's back in line. He called us. And uh, you have a sto- uh, question for Ed Kelly? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hey, Ed, uh, this is um, Kelly. I'm out here from San Diego. Uh, I was wondering hey, if- hey, Kelly, how are you doing over there in San Diego? Not bad, not bad. How you how you doing? I don't know right. Not sure. I, the only question I have is I was wondering uh, maybe uh, if you could let us know that uh, what type of uh, beings these are or, like, uh, species they are. Or or another question, do you, um, do you still get visited by these uh, by these beings? Um, yeah, I mean, the answer to your question is yes, I still do. And the answer to your question is I don't know. I don't think that there is a racist uh, kind of race of different alien races. I haven't experienced all just this one 
type of visitation. And um, I don't know of any conflict or any wars or any issues regarding different species because I've only had the one. The, what what do they are they look like more of the uh, gray alien type species that they talk about or do they have what do they look like? Uh, Kelly, I, I can't tell you what they look like. You have to. Uh, so I, I don't I don't know I, I don't know what they look like. They look like um, something that you might have seen an image of in a movie, but different. It's like saying to yeah. someone what all what 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 do all people look like? They don't all look the same. That, that's but, um, true. Yeah, it's a hard question to answer. So, what color are they? Uh, they're not white and they're not black. How tall are they? They're not short and they're not small. You know. You know, Ed, you come across when you explain your encounters and your experiences is unlike any other, uh, you know, abductee that I've ever uh, interviewed or has come on the show. Not saying that you're. It's just your thought process is. It's interesting to me. You and you explain it in a way that. It kind of oh, Blake, I, I, it, it makes I think sense. Probably not something that has to do with you. That's going to affect what I tell you. And you know, um, I have an indifference, but the thing is that um, <clears throat> this is not something new for me. I'm not on, you know, I'm not on my deathbed, but I'm not a young man. And this is something that I've been experiencing for for over, for over 40 years. Ed, any more uh, questions? Or excuse me, uh, Kelly, for Ed, any questions? Yeah, I'm just uh, I I understand how he you know Eddie uh, how like hey, you would like to explain it um I, and obviously to you they seem to be like more malevolent I mean you've never had like a like a scary experience where they feel like threatening to you or anything like that I mean uh, obviously they might be here I mean uh I mean I would just like to know what you know, the type of experience you know they show you or what they you know explain to you you know like through uh, telepathy or you know what? What are they? You know, are they trying to let us let you know that they're here for you know helping the greater good of human the humankind? Or oh, we just uh, Ed just dropped out. Sorry, Kelly. It's a transmission. I think he lives in some kind of a you know remote area out of Colorado, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to give too much away, but he doesn't want to let his location be known. But hey, it's the state of Colorado. But uh, yeah, yeah, we lost again. Sorry, Kelly. I'm not going to disclose my exact location. I will let you know that this... That's very good. Aqua's uh, joining us uh, right here. You know, she uh, saw the video, and she just called in tonight. We wanted to uh, share this incredible interview we're having with Ed right now. What, what do you mean it's very good? Go ahead, Aqua. So the fact that you're actually taking the time to gather this information and get it out to the public, I don't think that your convictions are false. What did you feel when you were around these things? This is an experience that other people in my family have had since I was a young boy and continue to happen now to my family. This is nothing new. This is a feeling that I've had for a very long time. How does it make you feel, the energy that you get from them? Uh, personally, myself, it's something that is not new. The energy that I get from them is not new. It's something that... Um, the energy of life, uh, experiencing that is a special thing, no doubt, but there are a lot of special things in life. Well, let me ask you, I want to get to this question about the sequence of photographs and these short videos that we're looking at. There's a, you sent me video yesterday and photographs of what looks to be like a spindly uh, kind of, people are claiming it's a great alien within the ship. There's dimension, you have trees, you know, in front of you in this massive vehicle what's going on so this is what has happened recently to make me start to reach out and share this information because it's personal information and these experiences that i have are my experiences and my interest in everyone believing in them or accepting them or recognizing them as relevant how much uh, more video do you have ed do you have more photos? Is there more uh, in the archive? Have you shared everything with us? We're getting short clips. Is, is there longer, uh, you know, video clips? UFOs, unidentified flying objects, extraterrestrials, you know, in areas that are primarily rural. I haven't had the experience in cities, densely populated areas, because I haven't really lived in those areas. But I have moved around. I 
avenues of different places. And my documentation of these events dates back to the 1970s. So I can't tell you that I have a complete catalog from 1976 to the present day. But there have been cycles of periods in my life where I've seen these, these experiences and I've documented them. Aqua, any, uh, what do you think of this video? I know it's been kind of going viral around the internet. People are, you know, downloading this, putting it all over the place. What do you think what we're looking at in the picture do, is Ed's story, Ed's sharing it right now, but I want to get your opinion of, is this a creature or an alien gray within a alien aircraft? Ed, everybody wants to know what it's like to be inside one of these things. So, yeah, I've always wondered as well. My own experience being uh, in the presence of extraterrestrial intelligence inside their technology is one that is uh, no different than a um, experience that you might have on your way to work one day. It lasts about that duration. It becomes a memory. It happened to me a long, long time ago. Uh, this is something that I've been for a long time. And it's a personal experience, and I don't think my experience is the general experience for everyone out there who might hear what happened to me. Well, what happened to me was not unpleasant. What happened to me was left me confused and misunderstanding, and maybe more private. But uh, it, it's an experience like people are going in the moon and people are making war. It's an experience that's real. You. I'm not a that is smart. I support that idea. What was that, Aqua? I said that is very smart, and I support that idea. Uh, do you have any questions for Ed, Aqua? You know, we got him on the line. Uh, the, these videos and photos are probably, I think, one of the best, you know, archives of evidence that we're not alone. Yeah, uh, I would like to know, when does this usually happen? Like, what specific time? Do they come by, like, at the same time, all the time, or what? They're driving. That's another really good question. You know what? The answer is pretty simple. It's actually a time of year. Uh, visibility does improve at certain times of the day. That's, that's indisputable. But this... Wait, wait, wait. I need to ask you a quick other question as well. Um, is, is it usually not windy when you see them? Wind velocity is absolutely nothing to do with the sightings. Yeah, that's what I always thought. There was like no wind whenever they were around. No, actually, I'm saying the opposite. Uh, oh, never mind. They're, they're, they're heavy winds. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear sometimes, like fading out sometimes. Yeah, the quality, uh, you know, coming in on this uh, Skype interview is quite low, unfortunately. I hope we're getting the audio with Ed coming in loud and clear, but we're we're trying to fix this up, the technical difficulties via Skype. But, you know, we, we, Ed, I really want to uh, show and appreciate that you're sharing this footage and we're finally been, been able to talk to you. We wanted you on the radio show. Do you think you could join us this Friday and come on the radio show and talk about this? And uh, do you have more footage that you're going to share? I have a lot of video that dates back from a long time ago. Uh, intermittently, I mean, intermittently <laughs> produced. And I'd be happy to share my experiences with people and, uh, and let them know. And I appreciate the woman you have on the show tonight. She's kind. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate anything that you want to post to these guys. These guys are so cool. Hey, thanks a lot, Aqua. I appreciate the uh, shout out there. And, you know, we're, we're going to wrap this in interview up right now because I'm looking over these videos and photos and I want to uh, ask Ed some questions personally. And we're going to get to that later. And we may share it on Third Phase Moon. We'll get to it. We really want to find out what's going on with Ed and uh, these incredible photos and videos. But I want to thank Aqua for joining us and Ed for sharing this incredible video. Aqua, any last words? Yes, I hope to hear more from you in the future, Ed. I hope that you don't disappear off the face of the earth. This morning, when Ed contacted us, he said he's back. We're going to find out what he's got. We're going to look at his evidence, and we're going to see if it is 
up to par to share with you right here at Third Phase of Moon. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell for updates. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. Blake Cousins, we'll see you real soon.